I think goals is the number one thing as an organization to think about and making sure you're, you're setting those. And when we think about a couple of those, um, the number one that I've heard since COVID's kind of come into play is that increasing working capital. I've heard from a lot of clients talk about that. How do I do that? How can I um, extend my DPO um, and, and what can I do? One of the things that I suggest clients taking a look at is what is your payment strategy? Is this an opportunity to refine that? Or if you don't have a payment strategy currently in place to develop one, it's one of the key things you want to probably take a look at. Uh, other things, yep. Megan, that you might have heard from a goals perspective. Well, on the slide there, you can see creating infrastructure efficiencies or just creating efficiencies overall. And I think Rob, you know, highlighted some really good examples today of what he saw in his efficiencies um, across his organization. And I would say digital payments, you know, they don't discriminate. So regardless of the size of company you have, the geographic footprint, um, the type of industry uh, you're in, there's a role for digital payments or electronic payments in your payment mix. To Rob's point, they're not, they didn't continue to, uh, to totally eliminate checks. There's always gonna be room for checks, but thinking about how it's part of your mix is important. On the efficiency, I would say, you, know, you can look for efficiencies in the typical three categories, people, process, and technology. You know, people we heard today that you can move people from sort of lower value activities where they're spending time, you know, opening envelopes, reconciling checks to higher order work. And in Rob's case, working capital and, and focusing on cash flow. From a process perspective, when you move to electronic payments, you know, and you're, you're initiating them, let's say, on, on your bank's uh, platform in BMO's case, OLBB, you know, a lot of the steps and the controls are built right into the system. So those process steps can come out of your manual work because the system prompts you to do those steps in your process. And from a technology perspective, you know, electronic payments have a lot of the remittance information that travels with them. Um, so that again, takes a step out of your manual process and creates some efficiencies. And then Rob, well, I, think as we listened, I think as we listened to Rob, the other thing he talked about was a cost and recognizing that there's a cost associated with doing manual payments. Um, oftentimes those have higher fees associated with them as long along with the labor cost, when you think about that ties back to the efficiency, can you gain efficiencies and gain that uh, cost savings by having your resources deployed and doing something else? Um, wires are a very expensive form of payment. If you can remove that and offer up a virtual card or an EFT or ACH, those are much lower from a cost perspective. And depending on the size of your company, and you take a look at the number of transactions you're doing on an annual basis, those fees eventually do add up. And that's an opportunity to save some of those costs. Along with those different digitized payments uh, come risk. And um, Megan, what are you seeing as, as far as some of those payment risks that are out there and changing those? And how do you make sure that you have good controls in place? Yeah, man, it, it's a really good question. I mean, one one thing just on the heels of some of the things that Rob mentioned is, you know, part of the risk is understanding where your payment is in the process. So when we think about payment uh, payment paper payments, um, some of the risk is understanding the timing, right? So if we just think about things like dependencies on the post office, you know, that that is something that's not controllable for any of us. So taking some of that risk out of the predictability of when the payment will go out or the when the payment will arrive, I think is key. But moving to digital or electronic payments, um, you know, when you are using that format, you can mirror the controls for those payment types with the controls you've set up in your own company. So Matt, you just mentioned wire payments, right? When you, when you move to wire something like wire payments, you can set up dual controls, you can set up you know, multiple level of controls on top of your maker checker in the system. 
Um, you can set up different uh, authority level controls by payment type. So you mentioned ACH, EFT. Um, digital payments enables you a little bit more flexibility in terms of system driven controls that marry up to your finance or your treasury controls that you have in your group. So it gives you more power and more control on overall reducing the risk in the system. COVID's really forced us to kind of take a look at that and find ways for us to be more efficient and timely with our payments. And at the same time, making sure that we're keeping our staff safe. And I think that's a key thing overall is that we have a, a safe concern in regards to our employees and our team members. Um, Rob also mentioned a little bit of, he falls into that bucket of one third. They've already been on this journey for a couple of years. However, that journey doesn't end just because you started switching your payments over to digital, weaving in that, that payment strategy as part of your goals and taking a look at that. And then making sure you share those goals with your banking partners. Uh, the more that your bank partners can understand what those goals are, they can talk about uh, helping you from the tactical perspective of achieving those goals. 